Boys, 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 girls. Okay, I just finished the wagon, and I thought a lot of guys asked me what it entails to build a Cape Coach One wagon, and I also think sometimes when I tell them that we 3D print, they sort of run away. Or they sort of frown at me when I tell them the price. Because they think, but why? It's 3D printed. So it shouldn't be that difficult then, should it? However, um, it's not that easy. So what I want to show you, and I'm going to not come into the the screen because I have a, I'm having a bad ear day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what happens is, it starts off like this. Now, because of the nature of a 3D print and the size of the beds, we print this thing now in one, two, three pieces, which then comes off the chassis like this. This is the inside. Can you see there? So this gives you your position on the chassis all right right let's just take this all off so you see this we got the three pieces like this but now also being in 3d prints nature this is not smooth you see you have the layer lines right there well, this is a very good print this is PG. so it's a very good print it's not a bad print at all but especially on the roofs um you can see the print line, so it needs to be sanded, which is where you want to pull your hair out of your head. All right, so this is the body part. I'm going to put this one side, and then I'm going to show you the chassis. Now we do that. All right, so the chassis is two five mole per spex pieces which we do a cut out in like this for the wheels to turn in. Here you can also see the brake system. Now the trapeziums and all that stuff and these get separately applied um, just because we can. All right. So this whole bogey gets printed, assembled with the brakes and then screwed into this, this chassis. All right, so obviously for every wagon is different. So each wagon has its own sort of chassis. There's no, not one of them that's got the same. Even though the same length, normally the pivot points here are different on various different wagons. Sometimes the axle's a bit back or whatever. And then all hell breaks loose from there. So the guys that do the printing for me, Tim and Fiona, they assemble... Uh, the bogies and they screw it into the chassis and then they print the body and then it comes to me like I showed you in the original picture that's what I get and I get a bag of groceries for like in the case of this thing two bags of groceries now let me show you what needs to happen then after we've done this and this is why I say don't ever think 3D printing is easy, or building a model, a 3D printed model, is easy. I've just stunned myself. If I got up to go take a pee, I stopped the stopwatch, and I moved my ass on this one. So this one took me 37 hours. Now, most of it being the detail work. Me and Karl from Klein Getrain, I don't know, I've told you before, we've swapped over now to brass steps now just this little thing this comes in a, in a flat etched plate so you got to build this all right so it's got to be soldered wara, 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 wara. all that's got to be put on also you can see yeah oh, it's actually quite a good you see these little rings here now the piece there at the back is resin printed and this ring here i cut from a spring and that gets put on here all right now, this is the naked side of this thing because the brake pipes and everything is on the other side. 
Now the door stops. All right. All those get printed separately in resin. But the biggest thing is all the rips. Because we wanted the rivets, this gets printed as loose little ribs that you then stick onto this after you've sanded it nice and smooth. Now there you got to have a plak 302. <laughs> eh, you got to know your way around a pot of glue and you got you to gotta measure very carefully because if you stuff up here then obviously these won't work and these are different to those. So there's a very important sequence to building one of these. You always start with the roof rips. Because you will see on the sprint here, it gets done like that. So I've got a guide where I can do the actual roof rip. It's got it on the sides, but these are very... Because we cut them off and printed them later in resin, they don't always line up. I drill them quite a bit bigger so I can get rips on. So you have a guideline as to where what goes. But the sequence is always do these first, all right, then move to the side rip here, then to those there, um, well, no, 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 you do that, and you do these, all right, then you do the uprights, right through, and then you cut these and fit them in there, it's one hell of a job, these, this one, I've done brass plates here, and I've punched them, the correct holes, all right, let me show you the other side, which is the busy side. Because here you got the brake line, the vacuum line. Um, you gotta, I made this one, normally this is printed, but this is going to run in the UK, so I wanted to do something special, and I just cut these and soldered them together. Then also you get these little, can you see there? Yeah, you know, These little brackets that hold the pipe. It's a very, very intricate story. And then after that, obviously, you got to put all the handles on. These on the roof is a new design one that we've done now with the crosses on, which is slightly different to the old ones. Um, both being correct because it had either or. Uh, a little detail things like these. It's put on. What this one still needs, but I'm scared to break them off, is the little hook Yeah, We print them now in resin. So I'll put that on last just before I paint it. I'm actually talking crap. I forgot to put them on. And you see, here's the stoppers for the hatches when they open. They go on to there. So everything in the original drawing done by Chris was thought of. Okay, so then the drawing comes to me. I go through it. I see that everything's there. Then we cut everything off. We reprint it separately because the resin gives us much, much more detail on the rivets. And, I mean, right from the start, I'm also called, I'm called Rikus Rivet. <laughs> eh, because I'm always hunting on about the rivets. It just makes the whole wagon look better if it has the rivets showing. And on the front here, because this is the East African one, um, you see these are also punched. This is uh, 0.3 mil brass, and I punch the holes, mark them and punch them. These years are the only ones that's going to bug me a bit because they glued onto the pedgy. I do not know how strong this is. I just hope they last. Yeah, we're also printing welds now. So there's a weld there. I put it on here to see what it looks like. I'm not sure that I'm convinced that it's actually good. I'm, I think it will work on a tanker, but yeah, it needs to be smaller. It needs to be narrower. So we'll do another couple of strips. That's that's 1.2 more. That's 0.5 or what, 0.6 we can go. But smaller. Now this is obviously, obviously the brake wheels. Let me show you. Uh, a while ago when we started with the wagons, we actually printed the first ones in filament. Yeah, they were fine. But then later on we moved to resin. And this is the resin one there. Look how pretty that is. So they obviously, once we're done, they get painted separately and they sit on there. I drill the hole and put them on there. And that's the last part for this thing. All right, so you see what I'm on about. This is just the top bit. Um, that chassis, as you can see here, is 
dead naked. You can see right through it. It's, you, everything underneath here needs to be measured and built out of um, profiles. Now, this is the other thing where I put my foot down back in the day. Lots of guys use evergreen styrene, and that's good. It's good if you build a model for a railway that's, um, you know, not being handled, if I can put it that way. But with this being Cape Gauge 1 and garden scale, <laughs> what it, uh, mostly outdoor locos, um, you know, I'm scared to use stuff like that because styrene is very, very prone to damage from sunlight. It's not UV resistant. So you have the problem that it gets very, very brittle. And we need to understand that these things, A, they're going to be packed, moved about. They're going to be handled. So they need to be strong enough that, you know, you don't have a problem later on. So I use from Green Stuff World, again, my favorite company in the whole world, I use their profiles because it's ABS. Now, if you look here, let's just see. You see that bend there. See how nicely that I bend that by hand. Without heating anything up, the ABS just bends. It gives you that sort of bend. 90 degree bends are no problem. So that's one good thing about ABS. And it's much, much stronger. It's in fact so strong that if I've got this attached to the wagon, it's structurally strong enough that I can actually glue stuff to it that, you know, in the background that needs support. But okay, let me show you underneath where all the other crap starts. Um, you see this? From that naked chassis, we go to this. Can you see uh, there? All right, now I still need to fill in here a couple of things here and there with the, the putty, but that, there's your, your brake systems, your, um, your Vs, all right, there's the pots, there's the tanks, da -da 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 -da. all right, oh, there you can see my soldering, <laughs> but anyway, okay, so, can you see, I can't see the, you see, that's the whole undercarriage of it. This gets printed. The rest of them is all profile. It gets cut, measured, uh, glued, measured again. You uh, glue your finger to the... And it's all... You can see this is dead, dead sturdy. It's The profiles are brilliant. I mean, this... You won't shoot it off like on some of the Perspex ones in the old days. Um, sorry, guys. No pun. No, no harm intended, because we are a very sensitive bunch, that's not, I think, um, it's just, the profiles are very, very strong. So what this video is actually about is just to show you that it's not easy. They're expensive for a reason, because it's 35 hours of my time, and we work for 50 rand an hour, which is ridiculous, but otherwise we won't be able to sell them. Um, I think it's an extremely well thought out model you know it's very good to say oh Rick is you're a legend I'm not I'm just fitting this all together it's the designer old Chris he's the big boy I mean he's the guy that makes everything happen without him nothing happens and then it's obviously the printers that get me stuff that I can glue on and obviously they sit with my crap because I often climb down their throats because of this or because of that and this is not right that's not and they always come to the party and fix it and by the end of the day we have models like this which are absolutely brilliant so yes um i had all of these in kits but because we work for what we do the price difference between a kit and the actual fully built one is very small um because we work for like I mean, I load a grand on top of this to build it. A thousand rand for 35 hours of my time. Um, because the basic print's very expensive. That, it works per gram. You pay per gram. And this is heavy. Yes, you can go and make it thinner and print it cheaper. But then if you press it like that, it'll just press in or whatever. This is rock solid and sturdy. This is like a brick. Um, I don't want to talk crap, but I think this is over three kgs. 
um, this 3.2, I think it was, um, this thing here. So I thought I'd just show you before I paint it and, you know, you lose all the detail between there before we start building it to here. All right. So you guys can see that, you know, what sort of work goes into it. Also, um, because now Carl edges me stuff, I want to show you the little handle on the roof there. Yeah, I can see that now. Now I can do stanchions on it. Not a stanchion. A handle at the bottom so you can't see the hole where you actually drill the stuff into. It's just little things like that that makes it stand out from the rest. And as I said before, the the major thing is to get everything straight. Um, you've got to know your way around a pot of glue. So there you have it, dudes. Sorry, it's a bit of a longer video. I hope you find it interesting. I see I get subscribers every week, which is brilliant. Um, I think I'm a hundred short from a thousand. The day I don't drink anymore. I used to drink when I was younger, but I don't drink anymore. But the day that I hit a thousand, I will drink. Not excessively, but I will drink a dopiki. Um to that. Thanks you guys for the support. Thanks for all the I read every single um I don't always reply. Um, but I read every comment. Um, you know, if I've got to sit there and reply to everyone, but you know, it'll take a lot of time. But trust me, um, I read every single one and I'm starting to know all of you guys in the regulars. It's lovely. It's a lovely community thing, this YouTube thing. I love it. Right, dudes, I'm out of here. Okay, so I will show you my train room. We are busy putting up uh, ceilings, which is a nightmare. And we've done two out of 11 blocks so far. It takes us a day to do a block. But as soon as I'm sort of halfway, I'll show you a picture. I'll show you make a video. And then we'll do the, one, the next one and so forth. All right, guys, I'm going to go. Okay, good. See, oh, see you later. Uh, good. Uh, Tot ziens.